Okay, we're here in some racing system with the Formula Abarth for the first time in a Formula car with the Oculus Rift and we're getting ready to go. A bit of a rush now to check the recording was going. It should be going. And it's go, go, go. We started. Whoa! Oh dear. Terrible start. <laughs> Someone else got cut off there. I don't know who it was. Uh, we've got a car to our left. Not a good time to adjust headset. This has been a bit of a disaster start there. Um, we're starting off in uh, 12th or so. I think we're just getting two places though due to that accident at the start. I don't think we've incurred any damage. I think we're all right. <laughs> what a disaster. Uh, the headset's not on properly, so we're a bit out of focus. Oh, cars to the left. We're all good. We're getting on through. But I have to say, this looks absolutely extraordinary. Uh, I was just doing the qualifying laps with the Rift, of course, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, it feels a lot faster driving this Formula car in VR than it does. What say, Formula car? The Formula Bath. It feels a lot faster in VR than it does on the screen. And uh, it's so nice being this close to the ground, actually. <laughs> Just like whizzing around. We'll see how this goes. Uh, not familiar with this car on this track uh, since it's updated. This is literally the first time we jumped in. We've done. I think we did about six laps qualifying, and that's uh, put us in the middle. And uh, we'll try and keep up with people and make the race interesting. It's a 10 lap race. We've got the soft tyres on. I think we set the fuel just just about right before the race started. We had to fiddle to get the recording going uh, just as the race started, so that made it a bit awkward. We need to get the rift in the sweet spot. The one thing with the rift is the sweet spot is quite small in terms of the perfect sweet spot, but once it's there, it stays there and you're good. So. There we go, they can fight for place whilst we adjust our headset. It's like having a loose helmet. Fortunately this car is nice and stable. Down the straight, there we go. I think we have it. Oh, someone's lost it on the grass, there's smoke everywhere. That's going to give us a chance to catch up, which is nice. Oh, collision! <laughs> Oh, there's going to be even more clicks of it. Everyone's going off the road. Look at this. We're powering on through. Incredible. Please, please, more drivers. Just take yourselves out. This is the only way someone with my pitiful pace will catch up. I'm breaking early because I don't know where these guys are going to break. I'm, I'm really unsure as to the uh, break points. Well, I was expecting the tyres to hold on a bit more there. But they didn't. We get the uh, downforce round here to glue around these corners flat out, we found. We discovered just a minute ago. Though sometimes if your tyres are a little bit off, you do drift, so you have to be really careful. All that car in the middle of that fray. A bit offline. We've got to be careful. Because as I said in the, in the previous video I did uh, with the BMW, this track is ridiculously hilly and also off cambered. Which you uh, you don't know it's on the screen, but when you pop the roof down, you see it straight away. And then it sort of explains to you why some of these corners are brown trouser time corners. So how are we doing? Francis Frenetti in front of us. Alan Johnson in front of him. We're doing okay. We can break later than uh, expected. I've been brainwashed by the BMW on this track where you uh, basically you have to break a lot sooner. Because obviously it's not a formula car. Okay, so it looks like we're Francetto Ross, <laughs> Ronsati. That sounds like a really nice Italian pudding. But we're overtaking the Italian pudding. Hopefully uh, we're all right here on this side. It's quite close to us, but... Yeah, we've just got to remember that we can break a lot later. Not as late as he did. He's gone full off-road in a Formula car. You don't want to be doing that. Although uh, the sand pits in AC are actually surprisingly forgiving. Uh, I'd have thought in real life if you put one of these cars in the sand, you're in trouble. In AC, you can actually get in the sand and drive out of it without beaching it. To be honest, it's only Live for Speed really had the sand pits. They had like independent sand pit physics, which seemed to me to be quite authentic to what would happen if you were to beach a Formula car. But from a gameplay standpoint, Though that might be authentic, it's you know it ruins your gaming session if you beach a car and 
It's one of those things that yeah might be more realistic, but probably actually is detriment to the uh, to the enjoyment. Look at the sun from behind. Sun lighting up the car. It feels really nice. You sort of expect there to be warmth on the back of your helmet. <laughs> oh no, we've got front the, the Italian pudding coming back up on the right hand side. Heli Corsa flashing up. We've got it to the top right there, so we can sort of wall hack with the Heli Corsa, which is nice. Italian pudding in front. It's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll keep battling with him. This is awesome. His car model looks fantastic in VR as he doesn't see his wheels. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing. Giant Formula car wheels. Oh, didn't want to go to third there. He's still on the inside. Whoa, Jesus Christ. We do just a headset. We've got it on a bit loose. His car wheel right in amongst ours. I've, I've winkled this headset. I need to adjust. I've tilted it and it's gone. Uh, there we go. You have to get the angle right with the rift, but once you do, as I say, once you've got it right, it's okay. Well, watch out. We don't want to Hamiltonize the Italian pudding on the inside. Once you've got the headset right, like we've got it spot on now, everything's nice and crisp, which is good. Well, we need to stay with the pudding, otherwise we're going to get done by Derek Klim Derek Klimic. They're catching back up all those guys that had the accidents, because they probably are faster than us. We're not that good. As I say, it's the first race with this car, so it's to be forgiven. I forgive myself. And uh, apologies for those of you... Again, getting blisters from face palming with the racing lines and the erratic shifting. I'm aware this is not how you approach this vehicle, but we, you know, first race in it. Oh, look at that. He's lifted. He's lifted. He didn't need to. Okay. We needed to lift that. Didn't have the testicles for that. Let's try and force an error from him. I'm jabbing the brakes. Totally inconsistent. Whoa! <laughs> Watch out! We don't have the bike there, and we've got a train of cars behind us. I just saw him in the in the mirror. This guy, the Italian pudding, is actually slower. And we can uh, look at this traffic jam behind us. We can take this guy. We need to sort of ignore his pace and drive our pace and overtake him. So I think we are slightly faster than him. We're not faster than uh, Derek Klimic, Bart. <laughs> I don't know. He's ah. Oh! Guy on behind of us trying to make a move on the inside. Italian pudding stays on the right. We need to close the door. We can't close the door because there's a wheel in the way. We can see it on Henry Costume. We can see it in the mirror. I need to get in this guy's draft, but I don't. There we go. We've got a little bit of space. Oh dear. See, I couldn't move to the left there because we've got the guy blocking us, stopping us from getting the draft of the Italian pudding. And that's open this up. We're going to get behind him. This is going to be a disaster. This is <laughs> this is crazy. Oh dear, gear shift failure by myself there. Oh, Italian pudding, come on! Whoa, we're proper on his rear here. We don't want to be on the outside of this corner. We've got a car behind us, but at least that's blocked that. Oh, he's pushing us wide. We can't get through, but we've not lost another place. That's what's important. We need to get past the pudding. <laughs> we're just uh, losing places here. We need to get a good run on one of these corners because the pudding is breaking far too uh, too early and lifting where he shouldn't be lifting and that's slowing everything down so here we go we need to get past him <laughs> whilst not losing a place to this guy behind us try to hook it up around here oh come on this is what happens when you've got a slow guy in front of you you risk getting someone pushing past you and then they get managed to get past the slow guy in front of you because they've got the draft and the runoff and you just end up going backwards down the grid. It's the thought of this tasty pudding we're going to block off on the left here. He's going to have force him around the right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, actually, this might work out. If this guy to the right of us passes us and we get in his draft... That'll bring us up to the pudding. The pudding's going to mess up his break point. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We need to actually just get behind him. Oh, come on, we need to slow up a bit. We're going to slow down to go faster. The pudding's going to mess up his break point. We're going to retake him. There we go. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. The pudding was too far ahead. If that worked out ideally... 
we could have used his draft to get a boost to get on the pudding to overtake the pudding in the break point and that would have worked out nice we're on lap six of ten this is a super sprint race and uh, the pudding it's like a bloody great wall of china can't get past me to just do something neat and tidy we're not cutting these corners enough nicely with the rift you can actually look into the corners and uh, very precisely place the car over the curbing which is what we need to do to take the pudding. Oh, please don't dive bomb up there. Oh, no. Bogging down. Don't go on the inside, dude. Oh, go on. Just enough grip. This, the gear ratios on this default set. Not ideal. <laughs> he can't get past us. And when he does get past us, he gets that retaken back on the straight. Staying on the inside as much as possible. Defending off this place from Marco Pajenka. Oh, I'm probably saying his name wrong. Let's put the names a bit closer to the middle so I can glance at them. Marco Pajik. Oh, no! I was not reading his name and left the inside open. We need to close that inside off. 4T1. Now, he's left it. He's done that a bit better. He's left some space, so he should be able to get on uh, my draft and overtake me here. And we just need to... Oh, we can't get enough speed to get away from us. We just need him. Okay, we'll lift off a bit. We'll get back in his draft and we'll... <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. That was my fault. We had a bit of a tap there. Who's last to break? It's me. I'm always the last on the brakes. It's my... <laughs> the only... Skill I have is being... Uh... The last on the brakes, that's it. Everything else terrible. Braking, not too bad. We're going to stay on the inside. He can't do anything. He's going to have a meltdown in his cockpit because we're totally blocking off. We're not doing anything illegal though, you know. We've not pulled back across him. I should stop talking and uh, get right on this guy's tail. We've got two laps. If I stop talking, I'll gain half a second a lap, so that might be an option. Look at that, that is not right. Ratio there. I'm not sure if we should be in fifth or fourth or whatever. I can see the guy behind us darting around in the mirrors. Marco Pajek. He's looking for a way through. He might have found it, but we're on the inside here, so no. Denied. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's probably banging his helmet. As long as we don't leave the inside open. It's really hard to pass on this track. Will, it, will he work it out? Will he wait for his pass? There we go. We'll slowly transverse across to the right here because he's, he's realised he doesn't want to pass at the start of the start finish line, he needs to wait otherwise we'll just retake it back so we're going to stay on the right side here he's, he's right next to us but we can't see him as long as we're on the inside of this corner we're good coming up the hill and he can't pass it he needs to get in a draft, I don't know why why he wasn't he needs to hold off on that last corner, then just get in our draft right, and then he can pass us on the inside before we can defend it. And even pass on the outside. Poor guy. I'm sure he'll work it out. There's going to be a jam behind him. Oh, we're so slow as well. Oh, it looks like there might be a bit of a hold-up for the Italian pudding. Oh, this gear, the gear ratio just feels totally wrong there. No, you can't come through. Sorry. Planting a car right on the inside of there. Right on the inside of here. No, <laughs> no way through. We're going to slowly move to the left. And stay on the inside, so he can't get on the inside, but he thinks we're going left and we're not. <laughs> Borderline illegal. This is, we're making ourselves appear like a cross-channel ferry. No, we're not going right. He's, he's jiggling all over the place. 
We're staying right on the inside. As I say, all he has to do is wait. He's now just set us back up into his draft for us to make a pass on him. He's, he's not getting the timing right. He needs, to, he needs to think about this more like a cyclist. In a bike race. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I feel slightly guilty. Oh, no, he's lost it. All he had to do was, uh, as I say, let... Let me stay in front at the start of that corner and then pass using the draft, but oh well. Too bad. Secured sixth place, it would appear. Lap nine of ten. And uh, we're good to keep going. That was some nice driving there. He forced his play defensive though, and he was, he was being very uh, gracious. I think he could have been a little bit more aggressive, so I do feel sorry for him. I hope, uh, hope he doesn't feel wronged by me. Oh my god, the gearing. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably supposed to be just taking this a lot faster. There's been an accident. I oh, know there hasn't. Just a little bit of smoke. I'm all over the place. Come on. <laughs> the traffic jam's catching back up. I love how you can see the tyres though, just around looking around, and you really feel, uh, you really feel placed in the vehicle so much. Just absolutely awesome. The holographic displays a little bit uh, interesting with the Formula cars because in the in the closed cars, having this sort of uh, menu uh, sort of feels as if it belongs inside the cockpit. Whereas in these open cars, it's like it's sort of floating, and that the wind would be hitting it or something, <laughs> or as if you've got some kind of screen in front of you. So it feels a little bit weird. But it's alright, it does the job, and uh, absolutely awesome just having all your apps there. As I said in the previous um, race video, we did the previous race with BMWs, talked a bit about the apps we've got and where we placed them and uh, how well that works. And uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I mean, I think VR sort of takes AC to another level, and this, even with this Formula Buff, which is quite a slow car really, but it is nice and punchy because it obviously is a light Formula car. With with a downforce, it just feels so raw and nice in virtual reality, and it's so good actually just being there. And every car feels so distinct so far. Each car I've driven, even from the the Japanese pack, the uh, new uh, Mazda MX-5, the 80s, I can't remember its name. It's a famous car, I should remember it. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, and the uh, the, even the the BMW not from the pack. Just each car when you get on them with a VR headset, it feels really distinct and and unique. And also, I noticed the uh, on the screen, the, the bonnet of this car in 2D feels really off because it, it's as almost as if the bonnet goes up. Oh dear, he's back. <laughs> We're gonna have to concentrate again on the racecraft a little bit. It's trying to stay on the inside. Kunos Kirby is definitely fixed, guys. Oh no, he's found a way through. We were too busy talking about how awesome it feels in VR. I've got a fly on my arm. So, this is what I was saying he should do to us. Take it easy around the back. Get just in drafting range. We should now just be at the right distance to get in the draft. I might have messed it up. <laughs> so, there's, there's me... All uh, saying what he needs to do. Oh, it was the last lap as well. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I should have blocked him up more. <laughs> what an absolute fail. He gets me at the end. Um, I'm going to be sacked from the team for that. But uh, normally, if we'd, we should have got off a little bit sooner if there was another lap. Ignoring that little failure there. If there was another lap, then we would have been in place to get an overtake on him. Oh, dear. Oh, well, we came. I think we came sixth, fifth or sixth, but... Uh, uh, that was alright, it was a good fun race, first time with this Formula of Bath, absolutely fantastic car, really nice cockpit details, awesome in VR, um, we'll be doing more racing, uh, and really enjoyed that defending and uh, using the VR to see where he was, and we nearly had a wheel in the face, but it all it felt fantastic, so uh, if you enjoyed that, please uh, click the subscribe button, like, have a cup of tea, the biscuit, and I'll see you in the next video we do, probably be more a set of courses, because this is incredible with VR, uh, see you in the next one, goodbye.